I'm Chubba Chara, and I'm here with the Audi S8. Now, a few weeks ago, I was testing a BMW Alpina B7, and it's one of those high dollar German big luxury cars that just go like rockets. And the S8 is Audi's version of the same kind of car. It seems to be a peculiar German breed, but they love to make these big, luxurious, fast cars. Now, to put this into context, Audi in the US has sedans named from three through eight. As the numbers go up, the cars get bigger and more expensive. So this is based on the A8, and this current generation A8 came out in the 2011 model year. To make it into an S8, you put a lot more horsepower under the hood, bigger and stickier rubber, you beef up the suspension, and you put some visual cues on it to make sure the world knows that you've got the very expensive and very fast version. Let's take a look at some of the details. What we have here is a four liter V8 with twin turbochargers. Audi calls it the TFSI because it has direct fuel injection, but it has a number of other interesting details. In fact, while you can't see it under this cover, the turbochargers are in the middle of the V8. They're in the valley there because that puts them very close to the exhaust ports the way they're set up on this car. And that means they can draw more energy out of the exhaust and make more boost more easily at lower RPM. That means the intake is actually on the outside of the engine. So the air is compressed by the turbochargers. It flows forward through an intercooler here and then goes around to the outside of the engine. Now this motor makes 520 horsepower and 481 foot-pounds of torque. It's quite a bit stronger than the last engine in the S8, which by the way was a Lamborghini V10, but it only made 450 horsepower. This car is a lot faster than that Lamborghini-powered S8, and also essentially this same engine is used in the Bentley V8s, except it's only making about 500 horsepower in that application. Now this engine has one other neat trick. It's a V8, but it can run in four-cylinder mode. And the idea is to get better fuel economy when you don't need much power. Audi claims that in the four-cylinder mode, fuel economy improves by 10%. Now to make sure the engine doesn't shake in four-cylinder mode, it has active motor mounts that are reconfigured when it's only in four-cylinder mode to absorb the vibrations of the engine. And it also has active noise cancellation. There's actually some sound that's piped into the cabin through the speakers to cancel out some of the sounds you might not want to hear from the four-cylinder engine. One other thing, the new engine is coupled to an eight-speed ZF automatic, which is two more gears than the last generation S8 had, and that also helps highway fuel economy because it means you can run lower revs at high speed. The S8 also comes with very grippy tires. In fact, they're low-profile, high-performance summer tires in a 21-inch size. Now, if you see the white stuff on the ground, you can understand why we're not using those, even though the car has four-wheel drive and we have 19-inch snows on it right now but you can also see this giant brake rotor and this big caliper up front here. That's a 15.7 inch brake rotor, and when you've got a 4,600 pound car that can run 11 second quarter miles, that's the kind of brake you need. The S8 also has an adjustable air suspension, and the adjustable air part means the car can raise and lower itself to match driving conditions, and it also has adjustable damping. There's three modes, it's comfort, auto, and dynamic, and in each one, it's not a simple shock setting, but it's a whole set of programs. And basically, as you move from comfort to dynamic, the body control gets firmer and the ride gets a little stiffer. There's no sense in having an S8 if people can't tell you have an S8. So the first thing they're gonna notice is this grill. It's about the same size as a standard A8 grill, but it has these dual horizontal elements that are quite different. There's also a couple of big scoops in each of the front corners. You'll notice that the outside rear view mirrors are aluminum. And if you go to the back of the car, you see four big tailpipes and a center diffuser element. The interior of this S8 is just drop dead gorgeous. I mean, the basic design has this dashboard that seems to be floating separate from the cowl and the doors. It's just beautifully detailed and integrated in there. And every surface you touch, this leather that's nicely stitched, this aluminum trim, this carbon fiber, it's all high quality and genuine, and everything seems real in this car. Everything that looks aluminum is aluminum. I can't feel any plasticized aluminum in this car at all. And it goes all the way down to the speaker grills. These are beautiful aluminum on these B&O speakers. The three details that separate an S8 from an A8 are the three-spoke sports steering wheel, this carbon fiber trim all over the cabin, 
and this crosshatch pattern in the upholstery. Another neat feature of the S8 is that it has a built-in web browser, and that's because the car has its own cellular connection to the web and can get web pages. Now, it's a pretty simple web page, but all you do is you hit info on the MMI, then you go to Audi Connect, and it's bringing up a simple web browser. Now, you're not going to get the full Google long-form version, but you want to get some weather, you just hit weather. In the immediate vicinity, it's getting the information. 34 degrees, 20 miles per hour northwest. Very good. If we go back to the main screen, you could do things like search for local gas prices, look for landmarks, actually get the latest news. Although, again, it's fairly short form, and you've got to be stationary to do this. They don't want you reading the news while you're driving around. This is just the first step in a trend that's going to continue going into the future. And I can imagine five years from now, most new cars are going to have some sort of web browser built into them. So this Audi has a multitude of cameras to help you in tight circumstances. This is the overhead view, and it's kind of a composite of all six cameras on the car. The yellow thing you see right in front of the car is really a set of yellow steps right in front of us. But the way this is produced is there is a pair of cameras in the front side of the car, and these are the two images from those. There's a pure front camera that's showing those yellow steps. There's a pure backwards camera like any car has. And then there's a pair of rear side cameras. So you can really see from any direction what's around you. And when all six of those are put together, that's when you get this overhead bird's eye view. One of the other cool things about the S8 is this multi-adjustable seat. Supposedly, it's adjustable in 22 different ways. So we've got the usual fore and aft and all that stuff. But it's got a massage feature. And if I turn on the massage, well, up it comes on the uh, MMI screen. And using my control, not only do I get a massage in the back, I can decide what kind of massage from five different choices that it can do for me. And I can also determine on each one of those how strong the massage is. So I've got five different massages I can choose with five levels of massage strength on each one. Also on the seat, there's a bunch of other features I can adjust. For example, I can change the way the upper part of the seat back tilts forward relative to the bottom of the seat back. I can go down and change the lumbar support and I can move the lumbar support up and down or I can go all the way to the bottom and actually change the length of the seat to give myself more thigh support. It's one of the most adjustable seats I've ever seen and it's all done via kind of a toggle button on the side and you can't see the toggle button but since you see what's going on on the MMI screen it makes it pretty easy to adjust. One of the other nice parts about the interior is the way Audi has mechanically integrated some of this electronics. For example, you turn the car on and the MMI screen just rises beautifully out of the dash. Also, you've got the B&O speakers that rise up when you turn the car on. It's just cool. That's the kind of trickery you expect when you pay big bucks for a car. Of course, after I'm done marveling over the beauty of the interior, I step on the gas and that's when you find out what this car is about. We measured 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds and a quarter mile of 11.9 at 118 miles per hour. That's just rocket ship fast. It wasn't that long ago that you had to get a Porsche 911 Turbo to get those kind of acceleration numbers. The beauty of that is that the power is really accessible in this car. We've got a 4 liter turbo V8. It has a lot of torque. We have an 8 speed automatic. And unlike some of the cars in this segment where despite the power, they seem to be set up more for fuel economy. With this S8, you just tow into the throttle and you get an immediate response. It'll kick down a gear, the boost will pick up, and it just surges forward effortlessly. Really, if I have a 520 horsepower car, that's what I want, effortless, easy performance, and this car really delivers on that front. Now, of course, one of the reasons that this car can turn a 360 to 60 is it's got all-wheel drive. It has great traction. So if we sit here, and even if we brake torque it, meaning we put our left foot on the brake, our right foot on the gas to build boost and let it go, it just takes off with zero wheel spin. And that's 100 miles an hour. That's as long as it takes. It's unbelievable. And we didn't get a hint of wheel spin, even though we're kind of on a wet road that even has traces of snow on it. So the performance in this S8 is not only stunning, it's everyday usable. Now if you want the car to be even more responsive, 
you can pull the shift lever back and go from normal into sport mode. And in sport mode, for any given speed, it's typically running one or two gears lower, and it also downshifts more readily. So you just tow into it and off you go. If you're really interested in driving in a hurry, sport mode helps you out. You've got one other possibility too. There's a button, it's labeled M with a couple of gears. That's manual mode. And when you're there, suddenly the display in the middle of the dashboard right now shows M6 because we're in manual mode in sixth gear. And we've got a couple of these nice aluminum paddle shifters. The left one downshifts and the right one upshifts. So if you're really getting serious about your driving, like on a track or a winding road that you know well, and you want to be absolutely certain what gear you're in, go to manual mode and pick your own. Now when it comes to deciding how you want this car to drive, you have a number of options. You can go into a car mode setup where you can pick from a number of programs, comfort, auto, and dynamic. And this is all through the MMI. And when you make a change here, you're actually altering a lot of aspects about the car. The car has an adjustable suspension, both with adjustable damping and adjustable air springs. You're changing the uh, transmission program mode. You're changing the electronic throttle linkage between your accelerator and the actual throttle in the engine. You're changing the sound of the engine. You're changing the steering effort and the steering speed, basically the ratio a little bit. So when you go through these modes, you're really affecting a lot of aspects of the car. Now the interesting thing is, the differences are not night and day between these various modes because you're not really going into stiff suspension versus medium suspension versus soft suspension. In each case, you're picking a different program. And if you start driving hard, I suspect that the car tightens up, whether you're in comfort mode or dynamic mode, to pretty much the same degree. Similarly, when you're in dynamic mode, uh, I don't think the car just makes uh, the suspension give you a stiff, uncomfortable ride for no reason at all if you're cruising along. But there are differences, and there's definitely a little bit more body control when you go into the dynamic mode, and that's where you want to be in if you're going to drive hard. You know, overall, the S8 is a sporting car, but it's also a luxury car. And the ride is really excellent, and it doesn't really much matter which mode you put it into. There's definitely a little bit more control and jiggle and dynamic than there is in comfort, but the structure feels rock solid, the body control is very, very good, and no matter what kind of pavement we're on, the suspension just doesn't beat on us. It's the kind of ride we would expect in a very expensive car like this. Now going down this straight road here, I'm in dynamic mode, and right now, steering effort is on the high side because that's one of the things dynamic mode controls. If I go into comfort mode, steering effort is a little bit milder. It's not night and day difference, but it's definitely a little bit on the milder side, so you really can tailor your experience the way you want it. The other thing you can do is you can go into the individual mode, and in the individual mode, you can set each aspect of the car that's changed by this mode switch into pretty much any way you want it. I think there's some combinations that they prohibit, but fundamentally, in the individual mode, you can set up your own scheme to suit your personal tastes. If there's a couple of controls I don't love about this S8, it's the accelerator and the way you tip in. We're stopped right now, and I ease down on the accelerator, and it's just very hard to get a nice, smooth, linear move out. You either tip in very slowly and move off very slowly, or then you ease in more and it sort of gives you a little bit of a jerk in the back. You only feel that when you're starting from rest, but a car that's this refined ought to have smoother accelerator tip in. Also, when you're on the brakes, it can sometimes be hard to just brush the brakes a little bit. The, there's a lot of initial travel on the brake pedal, and so you first touch the brakes, nothing happens, you press on them a little bit more, nothing happens, and then you get a little bit more brake. Now that one you get used to, and eventually uh, that problem goes away, but a little bit firmer brake pedal would be helpful. But the accelerator tip in, that takes a long time to get used to, and there's no reason for it. Now there's a bewildering array of controls on this car. I mean, there's a line of switches up here, there's a big block here for the climate control, and there's a whole bunch here. This looks like about 15 different controls for the Audi MMI, which is their infotainment system. The MMI controls a number of things on the car. This is the main menu, so you can see we've got uh, car settings, phone, uh, information, 
navigation, media, radio, tone. It, it controls a lot of things and there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I mean, basically the big knob is what you want to use to control for the most part. You go into navigation, you pick it, and instantly we're at a map. And by the way, the Audi uses Google Maps. So you see as we're going along, you're actually seeing pictures of trees and fields. Now they happen to have been taken in the summer as opposed to the winter. But you're seeing the topography. You're just not seeing lines on a blue or black background like you do in most other cars. Now if you want to enter a destination, the Audi gives you a number of ways of doing it. Basically, right around the MMI knob, there's a series of four buttons. And this has been true with MMI ever since it was created. And those correspond to the four options in the corner of the screen. So if you want to set a destination, you hit the lower left button. It gives you the destination screen. You want to set an address, you just punch address. And that was the last one we had put in. Now, if you want to put in a different address, there's a number of ways of doing it. You move the knob to house number, you press it and it brings up this rotary selector that lets you pick the various numbers. Now it tells me I shouldn't enter any data while driving, so I can't really do it, although I might be able to do it with the voice activation. Enter destination. 3408 Timberwood, Ann Arbor, Michigan. It takes a little bit of time, but it will understand that and ultimately bring up the address, I hope. So like a lot of navigation systems, the S8 won't let me manually enter an address while I'm driving, but it will let me do it verbally. The S8 offers one more way to enter an address. We're on the destination screen. If I bring it up to street, and I tell it in Ann Arbor, it brings me up this rotary wheel and I can enter a street name that way, but I've also got a touchpad here I can use. Now I want to go to Hogback Road, so I just basically make an H on there. It accepts it. O. O. G. And already it's picked up Hogback from the database. So it's yet one more way to enter an address that some people might find more convenient than using that rotary wheel. Overall, this car is just superbly comfortable. I've got a great forward view, a great view all around. The driving position is superb. I've got plenty of room in the front. I know there's plenty of room in the back because this is a big car. This is a very comfortable piece of machinery. It's a very quiet piece of machinery. It's the kind of car I would like to drive cross country because I would get there as quickly as I wanted to and I would not be tired out by the journey. One of the things that's surprising about this car is just how nice the engine sounds. When you first step into it, there's definitely a strong exhaust burble that picks up there. And that's not easy to do in an engine like this because this is a turbocharged engine and the turbochargers have a way of homogenizing the exhaust note and kind of getting rid of that rap and rumble that we happen to like. But they've made it work on this car and I think it's just the right amount of exhaust noise. Cruising along like this you don't hear anything at all but when you tow into it you not only feel that engine but you hear it working too. When we're accelerating I just love the way this car shifts. The shifts are crisp, they're really fast, but they don't kick you in the back. It's like the, the perfect shift out of the ZF8 speed, and they've just got it calibrated so nicely with this engine. It couldn't be any better than that. Passing, of course, is effortless in this car. You're not gonna encounter too many cars that you can't get around easily, even if they decide to accelerate against you in the middle of the pass. Top speed is governed at 155 miles per hour, as with most of the German makers, undoubtedly this car could go somewhere between 180 or 190 if it were ungoverned. In addition to having a powerful engine, this car has really powerful brakes. The front rotors are well over 15 inches in diameter, and we measured a stopping distance of 156 feet from 70 miles an hour. That's a terrific stop for any car, let alone a 4,600 pound luxury sedan. There's plenty of grip as well. Cornering grip was 0 .90 Gs, which is again excellent for a big car like this. This is an all around superior machine. The fact is, it has all the comfort and luxury you want in a big car like this, but it has all the performance you can ask for. And it manages to blend those two without compromising luxury for performance or vice versa. Just a few weeks ago, I was testing a BMW Alpina B7, and that's essentially BMW's version of this car. Big, powerful, luxury car with performance in mind. The S8 feels lighter than that B7 did because it is lighter. 
It's about 400 pounds lighter, and that's mostly because the B7 is built primarily out of steel, while the S8 has aluminum body and aluminum structure, and between the two of them, that produces a sizable weight loss. And I think I can feel that behind the wheel. The other thing I feel is that this car has that instantaneous responsiveness. I just tow into the accelerator and the car moves immediately. The B7, sometimes I had to step in quite far before it really started accelerating hard. And I don't know what the point of having a 500 horsepower car is if it doesn't feel fast. This car feels fast and I love it. After a couple hundred miles behind the wheel of this Audi S8, I love this car. What's not to love after all? It's supremely comfortable. It has every creature comfort you can imagine. It has maybe the nicest interior I've ever seen in a car, and it's rocket ship fast. In fact, it's pretty hard to come up with any criticisms on this car, but there are a couple. The throttle tip in is a little touchy. When you're moving off from rest and you want to be perfectly smooth, it's a little difficult. And the brake pedal has a little bit of sponginess and it makes it hard to brush off just a few miles an hour of speed every now and then. But this car stacks up very well with its competitors, namely the BMW Alpina B7 and the Mercedes S63 AMG. It runs very strongly with those cars. It has all-wheel drive, which the Mercedes doesn't offer at this point. And believe it or not, at a $110,000 base price, it's a bargain. In fact, even with options, this S8 stickers at 125 and that's more than $10,000 below the base price of either the BMW or the Mercedes. And they have options too. So at the end of the day, if you want a gorgeous car that can transport your family in supreme comfort, and you don't want to worry about blowing off a Mustang or a Corvette at a red light, the Audi S8 is the car for you. I'm Chubba Chetta. See you next time.